What is up and is going on guys, my name is Simpsy and welcome to another episode of my Total War Attila Huns campaign, this is episode 3. So, um, a couple of things have developed over the intern phase, so I thought I might start recording. So, we have a suspicious death, yes, we have lost one of my, um, my generals to an assassination attempt by the Eastern Roman Empire. Now, because of that, I thought, oh, I probably should have some agents of my own, so I actually did went and recruited two. Now, we did auto-resolve the Battle of Thessalonica. There was only a small garrison in there, and we were, like, 99% able to win, and I did desolate it as well. So, now, because of that, we've lost a general. Now, I would instantly try to um, recruit and raise more forces, but at the moment, we don't have the populace, you don't have enough populace surplus here to raise a new horde, which is, um, I don't think we can even rinse, yeah, we can't do that, which is unfortunate, but, uh, what are you going to do, I guess? Okay, so let's go see in the family tree who that was. It was Kurdika. So, um, well, this is something I noticed. Kurdika's 43, and his brother, Jarton, is 42. Wouldn't he be the heir? Uh, normally, it goes through the oldest in the line of succession. So, I don't know why that is, but I guess we'll just keep it as in there must have been a dispute in the family. So, we're going to make the line go through Charlton. And uh, Alden is quite old. He's blind at the moment, if you guys can remember. So, he's 61 years of age, so he'll be dying soon, and his son uh, will be inheriting the throne. So... Um, he was actually wounded at one point. I don't know if it was in... It might have been just before the Battle of Thessalonica or was because of one of the agents. And that's why his son is... It says this character is returning from duty. Um, his grandson was uh, the command of the army. So, um, now, with the line of succession, let's have a look at the family tree. So, his son, Okata, is obviously a dread... or well, he is a dread rider. He has one daughter and then a bastard daughter. I'm assuming the red line means bastard, I would imagine. Now, we, we need to shore up the line of succession because on the other side here, his brother has a lot of sons. Ragia has, um, is the eldest. He has a daughter. Um, Obata hasn't got any children. But Man, Manzuka, Manzuk, sorry, not Manzuka. I'm thinking of uh, Manzukic, who plays for Atletico Madrid in, uh, in, um, in Spain, uh, football. Um, yes. But uh, that's Attila's father. He has a son, Belda, another son, Revia, and a bastard daughter, Elia. So, we need to marry him off at some point. Now, we're going to do that now. So, let's have a look at the diplomacy. Who should be fitting for us? Well, obviously, we have military allies with the Visigoths. We have tribute and vassal states with these two. Now, even though they are my vassals, I don't entirely... Unless they have a superb princess... I think these guys are about to be taken out. So we'll negotiate with the Gepards um, a marriage. Yeah, they don't have any wives. Um, what about these guys, just in case? Because we might be able to steal a wife. Okay. He's, she's got a wife. She's a shield maiden. Personal influence plus two. She's 22 years of age. For Ulta. Okay, but I think the Visigoths will probably be a better suitor. Because I did see beforehand that there was a daughter... For the Visigoths, and we have a military alliance with them, and really good relations. So arrange a marriage. Okay, she's 20, which is good. A tribal wife, plus two influence. There's an 10% increase of having, of having children, and public order. So I'm going to marry um, Rodaline, Rod Lydia, Rod Lydia. Um, so we should be able to marry with the Visigoths because they've been helping us in Thrace, and I would much rather marry with a military ally than a, a subjugated faction. So we'll marry her off, we'll propose, and the Visigoths have accepted. So, I, knew, I wouldn't usually um, share the Hunnic bloodline with uh, many people, but because of the circumstances, there might be some plots or something coming along, seeing... Well, he does have one, and one only son. So we've married her off, and uh, she's actually not too bad as well. She's got some nice traits, which I really like in Total War Tiller, that they brought back the family tree, and the, the wives have traits and whatnot as well. So we currently have 25 food. We're getting 830 a turn and 21,000. So there are my agents being recruited, 
and here are the two armies. I did control M and merge most of my armies, so that's why you might be seeing they might be a little bit short. Now, let's get on to the battle in today's episode. We're going to be attacking Dacia. Now, at the moment, Dacia are just sitting here, and uh, they're a faction that, well, we are improving slightly, but I would imagine if we go to a non- like, I want to, I want to get as many client states as possible. Even though it's fun sacking the Eastern Roman Empire, I want to build a big kingdom, because obviously you can't really... Well, what, for a second, what what are the objectives for the Huns? What are the main objectives? Survive until 24... Yep. Raise or sack 25 different settlements. Research three technologies. Defeat five factions by capturing or raising their last remaining settlement or subjugating by making them. So, if we do that, that makes us our five. Earn the following amount, 7,000... Okay, from raiding... Maintain fire 80 units. So we basically, yeah, well, we can get that victory condition doing that now. So um, I wouldn't mind getting some more, I don't know, just to make it a little bit different, getting some vassals and stuff. I didn't think it was a, it was a I didn't realize that it wasn't a victory condition. But uh, anyway, we're going to attack them with this army here Wonderful. today. So um, I, first, I want to negotiate, try to get a peaceful conclusion. Speak so would you like to become my. Nope. Um, would you rather... Well, we can't rage any marriages. Well, it looks like they don't seem to want anything with us. So, what we're going to do is we're going to declare war. Um, we could bring our allies, the Visigoths, but then if we subjugate them, they're still going to be at war with them. So, I'm not going to call them for the time being. So, we've declared war on Dacia. They actually look Roman. By the look of the P in, on them. But uh, we're going to move this army here now, and we're going to attack them. Sorry about that one, guys. I actually got interrupted. Now, when I was um, interrupted, I actually thought of something. Now, because I was just looking over the map at my vassals, and uh, have a look here. Now, these guys, what the fuck are they called? I'm going to try and pronounce it. The Grout, the Groot, wait, that's Hungarians. The Great Ut, Groot Hungarians. Anyway, we'll just call them Hungarians. It's easy for me to say. Well, they're about to be attacked by these guys. Now, um, I would imagine they're going to be destroyed. Their army's pretty far to the north. And they're going to be taken over by a horde faction. Now, I thought, well, looking at the family tree, we've still got a couple of people we can marry off. And she wasn't that bad of a princess, to be quite honest. So we're going to renegotiate with them. We'll go with the marriage. And we'll marry him to Opitar. Now, what's the... It's low. Okay, well, I can offer you some money. I'll offer you a thousand. I'll offer you two thousand. Moderate. Rejected. Okay, well, we'll join a war against those guys. Only for the arranged marriage. Moderate. Rejected. Are you kidding me? Looks like we're going to have to sweeten the deal a little bit more then with some money. So we'll offer 1500 and we'll join war against. Accepted. Not that I'm going to give a fuck about them, because um, I'm probably going to make peace with them as soon as they get destroyed. But now, if we want to go up and take their land, we have a, a claim to it. So Opatar is uh, married, so he's got a wife now as well. I'm trying to think anyone else we can marry, because everyone else is pretty well married off, which is... Okay, so he's got a daughter. Son, son, bastard daughter. Let's just hope... Can we can we actually kill them? Assassinate. Okay, okay. So we can assassinate the bastards, do a, a Joffrey Baratheon to his bastard brothers. Anyway... Ironic that he's a bastard himself, isn't it? So, we're going to fight this one against the Dacians on the battle map. And uh, let's get into it, shall we? That first army doesn't look like it's got much. Only two lots of archers and one lot of onagers. The reinforcements might be something we could worry about, but my horse archers are just going to come in there and carve absolutely everything up. So we have four lots of our spearmen, of course. We have two lots of swordsmen archers. Then we have two steps. But my cavalry, my archer cavalry should just go in there and tear most of them up before. I'll be interesting to see if we could battle, uh, do the battle of Skeppy. Skeppy. I'm horrible with pronouncing stuff, guys. <laughs> as you guys well know, I usually try to abbreviate. <laughs> as long as you know what I'm talking about, does it really matter? Does it? 
it might have pissed some people off. But they have one lot of their general's bodyguard, which is really good, seeing as they are, they are Dacian, but uh, they look like they have Roman stuff. But uh, we're going to make these guys my vassals um, and whatnot. I always say vassals instead of like, tri aren't they Tributan states or Tributan or something? Tribri tri tri states. I just call them vassals. You guys know what I'm talking about. Client states and whatnot. But they have one lot of onages, so we might have to watch out for that. They might take out a couple of casualties. But, uh, yeah, 500... Oh, no, 563 from the garrison. Okay. They're not the reinforcements. But so we're going to subjugate them, and we're going to continue to burn Greece, Macedon, and Thrace. And then we'll keep pushing against the Eastern Roman Empire, try and finish them off. Or should we push west? Let me know in the comment section down below. Obviously, the Western Roman Empire is considerably weaker. But, um... Yeah, we've already got the... Well, they are considerably weaker from the start. At this point in time, I'd nearly say that, um... They're on equal footing. Because we have put the Western Roman Empire... Uh, sorry, the Eastern Roman Empire on the back foot tremendously. So, we'll go with just a surround, a basic surrounding tactic with my spearmen. So because of that, we'll put two on that side. They still have their archer towers, because in the last uh, siege we had, they were they were still in the game. So we'll put four, we'll put three there. And we'll put, uh, probably don't have enough to do that. So we're only going to have to put two on each side. So we'll put two there, two there, and we'll put the better... Um, shock stepped infantry with the infantry with the spears here. So we'll pop you there, and we'll also pop the the king there. But he's not a king; he's a great god who is just happens to be blind. <laughs> okay, so we've got my archers here. Let's move up. The enemy tremble before our superior numbers. And well, it looks like they're going. Well, I don't know what they're doing. But it looks like the majority of their army is here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and destroy the tower. If we can. But my horse archers will try and take down as many of them as possible. There are some cavalry charging. So try to take down that tower. And try to take down that tower. Okay, so they have engaged us there. I'm probably just going to hold just for a little bit longer before I pull them out to the side here. Because I'll be able to get my spearmen uh, to just absolutely wreck them. Now, they are shooting with their catapults. So I might try to sneak around in the city with my cavalry to neutralize them. But get my archers to pick them apart. And we'll get my shock cavalry wherever they are. They're here on this side. Okay, we'll get my shock cavalry to actually go and hit their units there. I'll leave the general there for the time being. Yep, so go in there and destroy the onagers. We've nearly taken that tower though. we get my archers to destroy their swordsmen. We'll swing around. Get my archers to keep hitting theirs. They're pushing their units around. We should be able to hit them anyway. Oh, we lost a couple of units because of it. Run them down. And we've just completely destroyed the onagers there. Okay, I'm actually going to send these units to go and take the town square to get this over and done with. My cavalry has just routed theirs. And we'll get my archers to finish them off. I'm going to get the spearmen to uh, destroy that tower. We've already destroyed that other tower, so we'll push these guys around. My cavalry has destroyed their onagers, and my other cavalry is just tearing up the last of these last uh, la, la, uh, light bowmen. I don't know why I couldn't say that. So what do we got? 
rally. I guess we could just get them to rally, but it doesn't matter anyway. It is a victory. Now, we're not going to run them down because, like I said, I do want to subjugate them. So, the more the merrier. A decisive victory. So, let's have a look at the... Um, the battle statistics, shall we? It was a decisive victory. We deployed 1,649 with Alden, and we lost 276. We have 1,373 remaining. The Dacians deployed 1,056, and they lost 875. And they have 181 remaining. We completely destroyed their general unit. We didn't kill him on the battlefield. Um, wow, their Onagers got 43, or Onagers, Onagers, however you want to say it. 46 kills. Their bowmen got four, but uh, let's have a look at the stats now, shall we? My spearmen did 20, all right, 27, but it's the bowmen who uh, do the best. Oh, well, no, no, the, the stepped unit got a fair few. That would have been running down those two arch units, 180, 134. But the archers, um, at this point, because the, the most of the enemies don't have that heavy... Uh, some of the Romans, when I'm fighting the Eastern Roman Empire and... Eventually, the Western, they will have some heavier units, but uh, my arch is just absolutely wreck shop, and if you can move them quick enough, it's just death to the enemy. If you must break the law, do it to seize power, and all other cases, observe it. Julius Caesar, Roman general statesman. My God, how much of uh, a shock would he get if he saw what was happening to the Roman Empire at this point? Jesus. That battle was a rather short one, 2 minutes 53. But guys, if you are still enjoying this Total War Attila Huns campaign, remember to leave a like. I'd really much appreciate it. I do put a lot of effort into these videos, and a simple like really does go a long, a long way. It just takes a second, and it tr helps me tremendously with my YouTube channel. So we've taken the Dacians city now. A decisive victory. And uh, we have three options. Sack, Subjugate, and Raise. We actually get a unit replenishment, but we were going to subjugate anyway. And now we have the Dacians under our thumb, which is brilliant. Having a look at the diplomacy, what else can we do with the Dacians? Uh, what, are, what are their relations? 62. Um, so we're going to have to try and help that. Uh, I wouldn't mind even just... And so forth. Now, hmm. what do you want? I think they are Roman. Are they... Ro Greco Roman paganism. So, yeah, they must be somewhat Roman. They're not Roman Catholic or Christian or whatever it is. If we offer them just a gift, hopefully that might help them a little bit. We'll offer you a small gift just to rebuild your lands. Because I don't think there's going to be much of an uprising. But, uh, yeah, we've taken them. What can my, you know, my agents can't really do all that much. But we are going to continue to push against the Eastern Roman Empire, get them out of Greece, try to sack and subjugate as many factions as possible. And then, I don't know, should we go over to Asia Minor and try to get them out of, um, uh, what is it? No, not Syracuse, it's, what is it? Syria. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Or should we push against the Western Roman Empire, who are already battered? Um, but looking at the victory conditions, we still need to raise or sack 25 different settlements. We need to research seven more technologies. We currently um, have defeated that. We've got that victory condition. And we need to earn 7,500 for raiding and maintain units. So we just need to keep on raiding. We need to research more technologies. And we just need to raise or sack um, settlements. Now, so I guess we don't really need to subjugate if we don't need to. So, let's hope that we get a lot of children here. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, guys, I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching if you watched all the way through. I really do appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, remember to go out and have a fantastic resty day after you've watched this video. My name has been Simpsy. Goodbye.